I've long commented on the irony that those most vocal about refugees tend to live in the whitest areas imaginable. It's like they're saying, refugees welcome here. I mean, not here, obviously. Foist them on some poor people so I can feel good about myself. Now that's par for the course, because no one does hypocrisy like the left. The majority of that inclination are very good at talking the talk, but less committed when it's time to walk the walk. They always clamour for the redistribution of wealth, as long as it's not their wealth. They want affordable housing built, but nowhere near them. They'd like taxes to be raised to pay for the policies they advocate, but they wail if their taxes get raised. And they're very keen on untrammeled immigration. While showing a marked preference for living in lily-white suburbs. And look, caution about immigration has nothing to do with racism. The fact is that people from Latin America, Africa and Asia are pouring into North America and Western Europe. But no one's going in the opposite direction. That isn't, to use one of their pet phrases, a sustainable situation at all. It's a disaster waiting to happen. This is particularly apparent in America, which has a long and poorer southern border. In northern Democrat-run cities, far from the crisis, the left have long been enthusiastic for open borders. Once more, expecting other people to cash the checks they write, to deal with the fallout of their hollow platitudes. So some southern governors began bussing migrants to cities like New York and Washington DC. And boy, they did not like that. But Ron DeSantis, once more showing himself to be a political grandmaster, went one better. He decided to target Martha's Vineyard. We know the rich like to retreat behind the walls of gated compounds to keep the mob at bay. But at Martha's Vineyard, they go one better. They've moved to an island so they never have to deal with seeing poor people. Except their armies of docile cleaners and gardeners, of course. Martha's Vineyard is possibly the most exclusive part of America. Just off the prestigious resort of Cape Cod in Massachusetts down the coast from old Boston town. And it's populated by the mansions of the super rich, mostly very white population. One exception to that is the island's most famous resident, Barack Obama, who lives in this modest hilltop dwelling. And Martha's Vineyard is over 80% Democrat. And like leftists the world over, they like to sing their virtue from the rooftops. In fact, they prominently display nauseous signs declaring, we respect women, we value black lives, we stand with our LGBTQ community members, we stand with immigrants, with refugees, with indigenous peoples, and with people of all faiths, we stand with our community. All are welcome here. A lofty boast. And Ron DeSantis decided to put it to the test. He flew 50 migrants from Florida to Martha's Vineyard to see if they were really welcome. And all hell broke loose. Because it turned out that those immigrants weren't welcome at all. Despite the preponderance of homes with dozens of bedrooms, it transpired that they don't actually have space. That immigrants aren't terribly welcome... And so the National Guard were called in and they were all kicked out within a matter of hours. Now, it's not like we didn't know all this was going to happen, but it's nice to see their brazen hypocrisy so nakedly exposed, so undeniably and ruthlessly revealed for the whole world to see, which was obviously DeSantis's intent. There's never been a Republican area that's reacted with such horrified revulsion and such indecent speed to kick out all of their immigrants. And if there was, you could be sure the pampered residents of Martha's Vineyard would be howling with rage and indignation. So how did they respond? 
Were they chastened? Humbled? Did it make them pause and take stock of the hypocritical drivel they've been spouting for years? Of course it didn't. Their arrogance, delusion and self-righteous hubris wasn't even dented. They still acted like they're the most tolerant, welcoming people on the planet. Overtly hugging the immigrants, even as they were speedily kicking them out. Never to return. In their eyes, they weren't exposed as shallow hypocrites who were, maybe, just a bit racist. No. This all just proves that Republicans were racist. Because, um, a refugee charity compared DeSantis' move to taking out the trash. A phrase not many Republicans have used about immigrants. While Ken Burns went on CNN to draw illusions between DeSantis' stunt and the Holocaust. For AOC, the whole affair was somehow interpreted as an advert for the decency of her political kin. She gave a shout out to Massachusetts and the people of Martha's Vineyard for showing the world what the best of America looks like. Which is an interesting interpretation. I'd say they've shown the world exactly what they are. But AOC even doubled down on this. She posted a film of her Democratic colleagues kicking out the immigrants while claiming that what Republican politicians fail to understand is that not everyone shares their zero-sum scarcity mindset. Many of us understand that immigrants and refugees are a blessing. They have so much to offer our country and much of our growth as a nation is because of them. Yes, they're such a blessing that we need to kick them out straight away. But let's pretend to be nice while we're doing it because fake smiles and hugs are far more important than practical realities. And this is the left in a nutshell. Empty rhetoric, thoughtless idiocy, and preening self-congratulation. It's a conceit. The veneer of being nice while acting with brutal self-interest. Their dishonesty is so deep it goes down to the marrow. That's why they don't think they're being hypocrites. Their self-deception is so complete that they're convinced they're doing the right thing, even when they're being mercenary bastards of the worst order. They're utterly blind to their own faults and inconsistencies to such a degree that those flaws dominate their lives and everything they say and do. Right-wingers can be complete bastards, absolutely, but at least they're honest. And honesty is the only way to approach and deal with any real issues. That's why the right tend to find solutions, while the left tend to cause problems, because they're more worried about feeling good than doing good. If you'd like to support this channel, please like, subscribe and think about buying my books. They're called The Tyranny of the Left and they're available on the links below. They go into topics like this in much greater detail. Please do feel free to pick them up and let me know what you think. Thank you.